Hello everyone, I'm Luke Pacquiao. Welcome to Bloomberg Law On Demand. Uh, my guest today is Steve Fraden. He's a partner at Kirkland & Ellis. We're going to be talking about M&A and the general state of the economy. Interesting, last couple months in 2010, we're seeing an uptick in deal flow. Are the catalysts there for that to continue into 2011? I think so. There's, there's a lot of uh, corporate America that has collected a lot of cash uh, and is looking for ways to deploy that cash. Returning the cash to the shareholders is sort of an admission that there's nothing better to do with it. Uh, and so a lot of companies are looking to make acquisitions. Secondly, credit uh, is not as loose as it was a few years ago, but it's definitely freed up. And so leveraged acquisitions are there. Mm -hmm. So just briefly, are we looking at an increase in activity across all regions and, and, and sectors and industries, or is this something that you expect uh, certain, um, certain parts of the globe or certain parts of, of the economic picture to accelerate more quickly than others? Right. So leaving aside the global issues, which mm -hmm. depend uh, to a large extent on political factors and foreign countries, and I'm, I'm, I have enough difficulty in understanding the politics of sure. the United States. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you're not alone in that. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, but I do think that there's going to be an uptick uh -huh. uh, across the board. I think, I think the private equity firms right. have a lot of money. They're going to want to use that money. And so I see a, a lot of acquisition activity. You're coming off of a, uh, a recent coup in, the, uh, in representing 3G Capital in their acquisition of Burger King. Could you tell us a little bit about that deal briefly and, and the structure that was employed? Because it, it is quite unique and it, it bears mention. Well, the interesting part of the structure was that we had a problem. And the problem was that uh, Burger King didn't have enough authorized but unissued shares to permit us to top up Mm -hmm. uh, from 51% to 90% and to do a short form merger. And so what we, uh, th the way we dealt with the issue is number one, we did a tender offer, which is what Burger King wanted and they were right to want it. Uh, and number two, we made the tender offer contingent on getting 79% of the stock, which would have got us to 90% with the top up shares. And number three, we did a simultaneous one step merger so there would be no delay if we got a majority of the stock but less than 79%. Mm. And I think that that structure is going to be the template for. That's what I was going to ask. What should deal makers take away from this? This is something that we're going to see more of? Well, we've already seen some of it in, mm -hmm. in, in some subsequent deals, and I think we're going to see more of it as, uh, as time rolls on. I want to talk to you about uh, the general sense of uncertainty that exists in today's economy, but at the same time, as you and I have already discussed, we're seeing a great willingness of companies to, um, to, to link up with one another in M&A transactions. How do you reconcile that, 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 uh, that scenario? Right. I don't think you reconcile it. I think there's a lot of mixed messages mm -hmm. in the economy. There's high unemployment, there's high profits. Uh, there uh, is low interest rates, uh, and yet a fair amount of concern about inflation. Mm -hmm. And so you see that continuing into 20, I, 2011? I see uncertainty continuing until we kind of get a grip on on what the unemployment issue is. All right. I think it is all about unemployment. Let's leave it there for now. Steve Fraden from Kirkland Ellis.